Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And we're picking up today with the story of Gideon. Now, the story of Gideon is found in Judges chapter 6, 7, and 8. Uh, and today I want to talk about the call of Gideon. Now, uh, the, at the time, the Israelites were being oppressed by the Midianites. And, uh, and so Gideon, being the brave man that he was, was actually threshing wheat in a wine press. In other words, he was doing an activity that normally you're doing out in the open in a hidden place uh, for fear of being discovered. And suddenly the angel of the Lord appears to Gideon and calls him a mighty warrior. And, and Gideon says, well, if we found God's favor, then why are we oppressed by the Midianites? And why is all this bad stuff happening uh, when we're crying out to God? And the angel says, you go in your might and strike down the Midianites. And, and he's like, well, I, I can't do that. Uh, you know, what are you talking about? And, and uh, the angel says, go, you, you've been chosen to be the instrument of God to defeat the Midianites. And, and Gideon says, I, I can't because I'm the least in my family, the youngest, and my family, my clan is the least in the tribe of Manasseh. And, uh, and of course, the, the story kind of ends this way uh, after all this inter interaction between the angel and Gideon. Uh, Gideon says, if you're really from God, say here, I'm going to go prepare a meal for you. And he brings out this meal. And uh, this is no short time. There's no microwave ovens and stuff then. So he presents this meal and the angel strikes it and fire appears from the rock and consumes the meal and the angel disappears. Gideon kind of freaks out a little bit. And God speaks to him and says, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to use you to defeat the Midianites. So uh, that's the call of Gideon. All right. But at that point, uh, what I want to lean into is simply this. I love the story of Gideon because Gideon was a nobody that God used to do something amazing. And, and over the next couple of days, we're going to talk about the amazing things God did through Gideon. But ultimately, he used him to defeat the uh, Midianites and set the people of Israel free for a generation. But, uh, but it started off with Gideon saying, you can't, I can't be the one to be the hero because I'm the youngest in my family, and my family is of insignificance in our tribe. Now, I know some of you probably feel that way. I know there was a point in my life when I felt like Gideon. I related to Gideon because I felt like I was a nobody. I was unimportant. Nobody knew who I was. Nobody cared who I was. And I just wanted to serve God and, uh, and have a chance to influence people with God's word. That was it. That's all I wanted. I had no expectations of God using me in any significant way. I just thought it was a privilege, and I still do, to serve the living God. And, and maybe some of you are sitting there right now thinking, uh, I'm, I'm a nobody. God can't use me. God wouldn't use me. And Gideon challenges that whole concept. Because here he was, a coward that God called a mighty warrior. And here he said, I'm insignificant. And God says, but you're the one I've chosen to make a difference. Now, Part of the reason God chose him is because he was insignificant. Because the glory will then go to God and not to Gideon. And that's part of his story as well. And that's part of our story. Because God doesn't care who we are. God cares about what we're going to do, uh, that he's going to do through us, and if we're willing or not to say yes. So today, uh, I want you to realize God sees you as somebody with potential, somebody who's important, somebody who can make a difference in this world. And I just want to encourage you to say yes to God. I hope that helps and I hope that blesses you.